Cars like the Elantra are supposed to be like a care package. Not real tasty, but they keep you going. So who snuck in the box of truffles? Let's drive the 2011 Elantra GLS. It's all new, and check the tech. This is the 2011 Elantra, a clean sheet design and miles from that little dough ball you were imagining, the last one. In a category crowded with Corolla, Civic, Mazda 3, Focus, Cruze, Sentra, and others, you gotta do something to stand out. Hyundai's trump card has always been value. Let's see how they play it. Now, the first thing they want you to notice inside an Elantra, and you should, is the exceptionally high level of materials and style for a car in this price class. For that matter, for a car in the next price class. It's really nicely done inside compared to the other Econo boxes. You got nice finishes here and there, soft, multi layer interiors. Now, the technology in this car is what's interesting. It can go from really bare to really quite nice. Really bare would be, according to the build site on Hyundai, air conditioning is optional. What? I've never seen a car with AC optional in years, but maybe it is. We do have the air conditioning system, but there's no automatic temperature control, for example. Here is the optional head unit because we have navigation. Now, don't get excited about the LCD being base. It's not that well equipped, but this is a pretty well priced package. Here's your map screen. Good, not audacious, but the important stuff is done right. Clear and crisp. You have live traffic and more. You can get a list or see it on the map. As part of the navigation package, because we get a screen, they couple that with a rear view camera, which is pretty good image quality, fairly basic otherwise. Voice control on this car is for either the navigation, by pushing this button here, or for the Bluetooth hands-free, you can use that button, or as you also noticed, for the media system as well. Speaking of the media system, even the base rig on this car is 172 watts, kind of nice, six speakers, it sounds fine, AM, FM, and XM satellite radio. Then you've got the dual connector here with aux and USB using a special cable for iPod, iPhone, what have you. That, by the way, is stock on the base car even without the upgrade to nav or the upgrade to better fidelity, which is like 360 watts and an external amp. You see, my iPod shows up really nicely. This is one of the better, clearer systems. I mean, that's just clean design. And the menu, when you go into various things like sorting by songs or playlist or genre, moves really quickly. There's my A2DP stereo streaming on my Bluetooth hookup. It also brings in media. I don't have any metadata. It just shows me basically the phone it's playing and the fact that I'm playing music. I'm not getting artist, track, title, what have you, but I've got my transport controls right here. And of course, we have a single optical slot here for CD or MP3 CDs right above the display. Now, by the way, that stereo Bluetooth streaming is optional, as is Bluetooth. One of the concessions in this car, along with no base air conditioning, like I believe that, is that it doesn't come with Bluetooth standard. You do have to option that in as part of a preferred equipment package. Now, on the GLS, the more basic of the two Elantras, you have a choice of gearboxes, a six-speed manual or our six-speed automatic, which is kind of pricey, as we'll talk about later, but it's got a shiftable gate here, no paddles on the wheel or anything, and you'll see an eco light on the dash from time to time. As I understand it, as of our shoot today, the 2011 Hyundai Elantras will have an eco light that just tells you when you're kind of basically off the throttle, driving very efficiently. Other cars, 2012 model year and going forward, will have a button called Eco Mode that is going to change the behavior of throttle response, transaxle, and shift points, things like that. So make sure you check that difference out if you go to buy one of these. Another way that they are saving gas in this car is with electric power steering. So there's no pump being driven off the engine with parasitic losses to power a hydraulic ram. Instead, an electric motor moves the wheels. Basic gauges on this car, tack and speedo, and then you've got your temperature and your fuel are done as an electrofluorescent. Straightforward stuff, but everything's very clean in this vehicle. And again, it looks a lot richer than it is. The new Elantra has an inline four without much clever going on, but it's just modern. 1.8 liter, 148 horsepower, 131 foot-pounds of torque, very average. That gets this light 2,700 pound car up to 60 in a perfectly adequate 8.4 seconds while delivering 2,940 MPG, and I averaged closer to the top end of that. Now, one thing you can't accuse the Elantra of is looking like everything else. They've rammed a lot of stuff into the sheet metal here, all this swoopy kind of sculptured stuff that Hyundai's doing these days. I'd say it's more style than taste, capiche? Uh, part of that is because they've rammed all this into a much shorter frame. This kind of look is carried off much better on the Sonata because it's got a little more length. But the cardinal sin in this category is to look like an Econo box. They avoid that, whether you think it's pretty or not. 
On the road, the Elantra is just a little gutless. I'd at least test drive the six-speed manual, but it is smooth and of a piece, not the rattle box that was a Hyundai of yore. Shifting around in the transmission gate added a little snap, but the car wasn't missing enough in the first place to warrant that hassle. Just get in and get where you're going. Now note the Elantra gets 40 highway MPG in every configuration. While the crews can do 42, and the Focus can get to 40 also, but they have to be ordered in special trim levels that are not base configurations. Okay, let's price this little guy. Starts off for a GLS, the base trim, at just under 18,000, but that's with a manual gearbox. If you want the automatic, which is also a six speed, with that eco mode, whatever that means on your model year, that's going to add a rather unconscionable 2250. Very pricey for an automatic in this day and age, especially on a car of this caliber. Other options would include air conditioning. <laughs> Don't really believe that. Uh, 550 bucks for the preferred package. That's going to get you Bluetooth hands free, Bluetooth streaming, steering wheel audio controls, 16 inch wheels, alloy wheels. These are nice upgrades for 550. The big tech payload is the nav package. Upgraded audio, that nice touchscreen 7 inch color LCD nav with traffic stocks and weather, and you get the rear view camera. For 1850, even though I'm not a huge fan of built in navigation, that's a pretty good value for that package.